And now we talk about the intake manifold porting finish, the texture, the evolution from when we started back in 2006, which is around 17 years ago, and then the changes that we did from between 2015 to 2018, and of course, from 2018 onwards, the evolution of the port work that we do and the reason why in our approach and we'll talk about it, the evolution and the reason for the changes and the approach and why we do what we do nowadays. And this is going to show you how things change constantly in our department when we start improving and we keep improving even though it's already good, we still try to find the better solution or even better work than before. <laughs> Okay, now let's get at it. This is the texture finish that we've been doing since 2006 all the way to uh, about 2015. And here is the P30. You can see it's all good and smooth. The shaping is what's what we found really important. But then, you know, as time goes by, we, we started exploring on the port finishes. This is the RBC, and you can see it's really good, right? And also here on the D16 Skunk 2 of my, my own, and of course, the pictures are not quite detailed, but you know, but it will do for now. And here is the ITR manifold that we've done and the finishes from years, years back, before 2015. And you can see it's pretty decent, right? We know it works really, really good. Here is a dyno sheet of one of the first, or actually the first ITR manifold that I ported. This is for a, on a B16A with a Type R pistons and just Skunk 2 tuner 2 cams. And you can see here it's dated exactly 2005. This is the very first one I did for H3 Autoworks for Bong. And you can see the peak power is around 9.1, right? But after peak power, it's not nose diving down. It's near 10,000 RPM. It's still pulling something or pull, pulling decent, right? Next one is here, a stock. ITR block with just the blocks B cams. That's why it's speaking early in the ported manifold, the before 2015 spec. And you can see here, peak power is around 8,000, right? But look at it, all the way until almost 9,000 or maybe 8,000 8, RPM, it's still holding on to above 200 wheel horsepower. That is good. It's going to shift good and pull good times. And for those who know, will know that being able to shift higher than your peak power also lets you pick up this next gear on a better power band or on a better RPM within the power band. And so if what we're sharing right now is really good for you guys or find you, you find it interesting, hit the subscribe button. And of course the bell notification. This way, every single time we share something about what we do and also our projects, you'll definitely know right away. And of course, hit the like, like button. It helps spread out the video even better and even more. So this way, more people get to see it and enjoy the stuff that we do. And now moving to 2015, because everything was working fine, I tried to, you know, I was thinking about ways to improve it. And because the intake manifold is dry flow, not wet flow, it's dry flow, I figured, okay, if velocity stacks are like smooth and all that, and it works really good, why not have the entry up to at least two inches inward smooth like a velocity stack? So this is around 400 to 600 grit finish. That's why it's this smooth. So, you know, it, from 2015 all the way to 2018, this was the finish that I was doing and I was using. And of course, other people may say that they you know it, it it does nothing or it proves nothing but hey this is what i do and it's been working for us and if if some people would say it, it's not worth the amount of work put into it well for me this is fine and we still charge the same for every single manifold that we do and hey you know it looks pretty good right and we're just sharing what we do here so being passionate about these things is is good for me at least for me because it doesn't keep me staying complacent because when things are 
working really well. Eventually, I tried to figure out or start thinking, are there more improvements to be made or is, are there more room for more improvements? And of course, we get to test a lot of things and that's on our engines. We don't spend customers' money on our research. Now, to look back on the reason for how smooth we took it, look at this, the velocity stacks are all smooth. And of course, when you think about it, we've never heard someone or someone claim that the velocity stacks were too rough in finish or the texture. That's why it didn't flow quite well. That's We've never heard that, right? So here it is, looking at it again, you can see we smoothed it out just like a velocity stack, the smoothness. So this is a between 400 to 600 grit sanding roll. And to get this, to get it this smooth, we use a 70% ethyl alcohol and 30% soapy water or dishwashing soap mix. So you can keep polishing it and it's gonna be this smooth with that grit. You no need to go 800 or 1000 grit. 400 to 600 grit is enough to do this. It takes time, but hey, you know, it's something that we like doing. We like to get improvements wherever we can, when we can, and how we can do it for the customers. And reason why I mentioned that is because locally there are places or shops or even people or friends that would suggest too many things to a customer and they would spend money on that, not realizing the suggestion was mainly from because they wanted to learn too, or like a shop or a builder wanted to experiment or learn something and it's at the expense of a customer. We do not do that because this is our passion. So whenever we have extra, wherever, whenever I have extra, I work on my engines. I, de I develop what I want to develop at my expense. This way, when it's time for the customer, I'm already confident on what works and what what's proper and what I like to do that's gonna give a better performance result. So hey, that is how we do it here. Okay, now let's go to the latest iteration, 2018 onwards with dyno sheets. But let's have one last look at the 2015 to 2018 spec finish that we used to do. You can see here, this is a Skunk 2 ITR style Pro Series intake. We finished this with a 600 grit with just ethyl alcohol and soapy water. Because we try, you, I mean, you, you guys can try 800 or 1000 grit, but it just gets darker for some reason. I don't know why. Probably it's because it's cre it creates more heat and more rubbing. So 600 grit has worked for us thus far. So, yep, and here's a P30 manifold, and you can see I actually got in like maybe two inches or two and a half inches just to emulate the velocity stack length. And you can see here, it's a really good velocity stack texture finish, right? And it takes a little longer than usual to get this texture finish, but hey, to be honest, it's no big deal for me, especially when I get to enjoy my work. So, this is not really something extra work that we have to charge higher or more you know we just we still charge the same so now this time it's for real let's go to the new one all right now here we are as you can see we extended the runner finish all the way until like before half inch of the opening this way we maintain the velocity stack, velocity stack entry the texture but the rest of the runners is more textured and don't get me wrong this is not rough it's still like 120 grit finish and often lubricated as we polish it so this way the fine texture of the runners is still really good except of course the last half inch of the opening is more like a velocity stack right it's evident in this picture you can see and here look and of course like i said before this is how we how we do this so this is our way and of course other people might say oh it's a waste of time and whatnot but hey we got dino sheets in in a little bit to show you guys this works for us so this is what we do we're just sharing the changes of what we do before and now i mean you know we constantly try to improve ourselves on what we do and of course it also helps promote the proactive thinking to our viewers like for example it makes you realize that hey maybe some of your ideas will also work right so you got to study that further 
And also you can click here for the dedicated video for the P30 porting of the manifold. And of course, we'll have it in the description below so you can binge watch. And one more look at the P30 intake manifold with the finished texture that we do currently. Before we head to the Skunk 2 Pro Series ITR style intake manifold. You can see it looks really good, right? Yep, and it's all consistent. Okay, now let's go to the ITR style Skunk 2. Oh, and here we are, here we are. Would you look at that? Yeah. And actually, as mentioned earlier, the theory or the approach here, what I did is because on a velocity stack, they're really smooth, right? And we've never heard people say, oh, it wasn't flowing enough because it was too smooth, right? So I did that to the entry, but then again, it made me realize the runner itself, the texture has to be really good or at least promoting less surface tension. This way it flows even better. So that's why the rest of the runners, I made it smooth, but textured as you can see here, right? So it's strictly just the opening that we made like a velocity stack, whereas smooth as velocity stack and it's evident in the pictures right it looks really good so a little later we're going to show you the dino sheets of when we started making this version of the port finish of the intake manifolds it's going to be so cool for you guys you'll see right and you can see the reason why we chop it this way is because it lets us port every single area around it equally and better without any obstruction and before we get to the dino sheets Here's a dedicated video for the ITR manifold porting. You can click up here, but of course, the link will be in the description below. This way, you can finish this whole video and see the dino sheets, right? It's to promote binge watching because it's going to be fun for you guys. All right, here we go. Now, this is a B18C stock block, of course, ported head in the intake manifold, the version that we're doing currently. Look at this. It's just a blocks B cam, but look. The rev limit or the power is almost until 10,000 RPM. It's peaking around 91 or 9,000. That's pretty good, right? That's 211 wheel horsepower. Pump gas. This ran 13.4 on a four door by the owner. So that's not bad, right? It's all about the RPMs, of course. And yet another street car. This one is a B20 VTEC with one up pistons. It made 224 wheel horsepower. Pump gas. The good thing to show you here, or one thing that I want to show you here, is look at this after its peak power between 8 8 look the power is not really falling off it's trying to carry over that's good and of course there's many factors on that but definitely this finish on the intake manifold is not being a hindrance to its performance so it's probably helping it too right and also you can click here or it'll be in the sorry it'll be in the description below this dedicated video on po8 sock intake manifold porting and of course none of the videos on the intake manifold went in depth with the port finishes that's why we did this video it covers on all the intake manifold just like this one for the d16y8 vti intake manifold so you know you gotta subscribe because you can binge watch this on your own time or of course we can have the playlist prepared and of course you can click right here for that